All right, so I'm gonna show you how I sharpen my chain. Now, this could be completely way off and I could be way wrong, but uh, it seems to work for me, so I might have some of the correct uh, aspects of it. Uh, anyway, so to do this, um, two things that I use are gonna be a uh, round file here with a little uh, attachment that you can get at basically any type of hardware store. And then just a plain old flat file is what I use, and this is just what I had. A um, couple things to note, um, depending on the type of uh, chain, you probably should check your owner's manual to make sure you have the correct round file, because the round file is what's going to get you right in here. And if you got the wrong size file, you're either going to take out not enough or too much, or just the right amount if you have the right one. Um, so, for instance, this chain here is going to be the 0.325, and I don't know if this is considered a chisel, micro chisel, or whatever they, and they got so many different types of chain. Um, but in the owner's manual, it says that I need a 316 uh, file, which this is. And then also this guide, I believe is for 316. Yeah, it says 316 file. Uh, you probably can't see that, but it says it right here. Um, this is an older unit. Uh, Oregon makes this one as well. This would be a newer one. Um, what I don't like about this one is that these clips that are supposed to hold the file in, they don't. They pop off. Um, it's obviously much quicker to get the file on here, but with this one, and this is an old one my dad had, uh, this one uses wing nuts, and these wing nuts hold much, much better um, for when you file. Um, and then the other thing is uh, the 3 8 pitch chain I got on the other saw, that takes a 7 30 seconds file. So obviously there's some differences be between um, the different uh, sizes of chains and files you need. So make sure you get the correct one when you're doing it. Um, let me get set up here so you can see what I'm doing next. Okay, so this is kind of hard to see. Uh, but one of the things that I do is I mark the uh, first tooth I start with. Um, with a sharpie, in this case it's green, just so I know where I start, um, so I know what's going on, and then that way I know when to stop, just in case you can't tell, it's an easy way to mark it. Um, and then with the file, when you put it on there, in the owner's manual it says you should have it tipped, so in this, we're going this direction, you only go, you only travel one direction, don't travel back pulling it because you goof it up, but you're going to travel in this direction, and you want it tipped, I'm going to ex over exaggerate it here. So you're going to tip it in that direction down. And then also you want to make sure you have the correct angle. So you kind of want to stay with the tooth. And if you look on this gauge, it has the markings and it gives you that, what is it, 25% or 25 degrees, 30 degrees, something like that I think is what it's got to be. So with this first tooth here, you're going to start, you want to line up these lines so there's a line that's coming across like this. Yeah, you can't see any of that. Um, and then you're just going to kind of take a couple swipes. When you go, you're going to go in one direction. Don't pull it back like this because that's not uh, the right way. So the way I do it, I usually take a couple passes on it and I'm lining up this line with the bar. And you want to kind of keep it that way the whole way and then keep that 10 degrees uh, tip down. And I usually take, I think, three passes. Let's see if I can get it in there one more time. Okay, so how does that look? It doesn't look too bad. And you can kind of see it. It's obviously much sharper already. Um, but that's what I do when I go through and do all the, uh, the teeth there. Let me see if I can get a different angle here. Okay, so this is a different angle here, maybe you can see. So this is my next tooth here that I'm going to do. Obviously, this tooth you can't do because the angle's going this way. Um, that's when I would flip the bar around and you catch all of those on the other side. So this would be our next tooth that we're doing. So again, you can kind of see where the lines are. This line doesn't pertain to us. We're looking at this one. So what you want to do is line that up so it's going the same direction and you're parallel with the bar. And then keep your 10 degrees kind of tip down just a little bit with your your file down and you're just going to kind of give her let's see here and I, I don't know there's might be like a science to this or some sort of specific method I know you can take them in there's a place I talked to they'll 
sharpened chains for like 10 bucks a chain or 8 bucks a chain depending on if you take it off or leave it on but uh I don't know, like I said, I've always done this until like something catastrophic happens, like you end up sawing into a piece of rebar that's inside the tree, which you have no idea how that even happened. It must have been staked there or something. So and like I said, I just give it three three good passes and then that's I just go go like that. And then uh I do each one of the, the teeth here. So we'll set up some time lapse and give her a go. Okay, so again, this is top view, so maybe kind of difficult to see. So I just got done doing all of the, uh, I don't know what these are called, the teeth we'll call them, I guess. I'm not really sure of the technical name. Uh, I thought that the little area that you're actually carving out there is called the gullet. Maybe that's like some sort of slang term. I'm not 100% sure. Pretty sure the part right in front here, um, they call that your like depth gauge or raker. Um, so that's the next part we're going to do, and that's what we use the... Uh, the Stanley flat file here for. Um, I think what it says in the book is you want to make sure it's a certain like millimeters below this uh, this tooth we're gonna call it. The way I the way I do it I usually just take one off like one file across each one of these rakers. Um, seems like you get bigger wood chips because the tooth then is taking more of the chunk of wood because there's less that it's bumping off of. Um, I think it also says in the book that you should run the file um, kind of like this one pass just to kind of round this back off. I usually don't do that. I just run a, a one flat pass right across like this and just do it that way. So I don't know whether that's right or wrong. That's the way that I've been doing it. And again, in this green tooth, I can use that as a guide so I kind of know where I'm at. Boy, I don't know. This saw is like bound up. I'm gonna have to check into that. So let's see here. I just run it flat. You want to keep your keep your file pretty flat as you do it. And you can see like one pass that takes a lot off. Like this file is either really sharp or this that depth gauge metal is pretty soft. So you take one file across there and that that takes quite a bit off. Boy, I don't know. Alright let me uh, go back to Time lapse here. All right, so I got it there. Um, I would say, uh, without having to reset the camera a million times, you could do this in about 15 minutes. Um, on it, this is a 20-inch bar, so obviously a longer bar may take a little bit longer. Um, the thing I didn't show you is after using this file a couple times. Uh, it gets kind of filled up with metal shavings. So I just use an air compressor and kind of blow it out or you could use like a wire brush and just kind of wire brush some of those metal filings out. Because otherwise it just kind of rides on top. You're not, it, the file's not digging into there to actually take any material out. What is this on here? It's stuck, whatever it is. Um, two, the other thing you could do either before or after is make sure your bar is clean. Um, I worked it back and forth and I have a bunch of bunch of dirt coming out so obviously it's pretty gunked up from using it I haven't cleaned it since last time um, probably a good idea to blow out all those metal filings because otherwise you're gonna have that stuff right around the chain tool wearing it out um, obviously I'm gonna clean it up here once I'm done and then uh, with the filing down the rakers um, you may think well I'm just gonna file that raker down to nothing so the whole tool tooth cuts you could do that, but then your saw is going to be really jumpy. It's not going to cut like nice and smooth when you're coming down and you're cutting into a log. It's going to want to hop and bounce because it's just too much. So um, if you did file it down more, like let's say I filed this rake, these rakers down more than what I should have, eventually it'll kind of catch up with itself. If you use it enough, the chain will kind of wear in again, and then you won't have to worry about it kind of bouncing. But if you file this raker completely off here, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, can you see this one better? Maybe this one. If you file those rakers completely down to nothing, it's not going to work very nice. So, 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, that's all I really do with uh, chainsaw sharpening. Is sharpening. It's your round file, your flat file. Those are your two most important. And really, you could probably do this out in the woods if you cut some really dirty wood. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is right or not, but it's got man, those things are like razor sharp. Like I can actually it digs right into my skin now. Um, it obviously must be doing something. Now whether or not I'm doing a really great job with it or maybe if you take it in and spend the 8-10 bucks you get a razor sharp chain but to me that's downtime. This way I can do it at home. I could do it during the week and by the weekend I'm ready to rip again. And, I, and you don't have to take the chain off. I mean for what that's worth. So alright that's gonna be uh, that'll be it for now.